Are you just starting out in development or feel like you are? Or are you overwhelmed by how much money you need to raise this year? Well, I've got some development basics. You should know whether you're new to development or even a seasoned veteran. Stay tuned, I think you're gonna enjoy these. I hadn't been in development long when a colleague asked me to fill a volunteer slot on the hospitality team for a major donor weekend our organization was conducting. This was the premier fundraising event for our organization, raising millions of dollars. In attendance would be some of the largest donors to our organization, many having either made multi-million dollar gifts or at least made multi-million dollar commitments. For me, it was a privilege and an honor to be inducted into this team as only a select few staff were ever asked to join in this event and no one ever left the team except when they left our organization. My first event was a high-end Marriott in Phoenix, Arizona. I arrived early to help with setup, registration, and to greet guests. We were about 20 minutes from the start of the event and the ballroom was filled with some room, truly remarkable corporate leaders, entrepreneurs, and accomplished business professionals. I spotted a colleague in a circle talking to a handful of major donors and thought it might be fun to join the conversation. I soon discovered that one of the men in the group was part of helping provide needed advice and counsel to our founder as he was starting our organization. The man was in his early to late 80s, but still very fit and very well dressed. The conversation was lively, and at one point, the man accidentally dropped a slip of paper. As it fell to the ground, I can remember thinking, wow, he didn't see that paper fall. I'll get it for him. So without haste, I briskly bent down to pick it up. At the exact same time, the man apparently did notice that he dropped the paper and went down as well. With great force, we hit heads. I, a strong 25-year-old, knocking heads with an aging 80-year-old. Well, the result wasn't pretty. He started to stagger as the other men went to grab him by each arm and steady him. They escorted him to a chair to sit down. There I stood, stunned in silence. My first major donor event, and I nearly killed one of our largest donors. Well, he recovered nicely, but the rest of the weekend, I simply kept my head down and resisted getting into any further discussions with guests. They did keep me on the team despite my incident, and I enjoyed running many more uneventful major donor weekends. Why do I share this story? It was a simple mistake, but one that has stayed with me for more than 36 years because I learned some valuable lessons. Never take anything for granted. Keep my head on a swivel, control my environment as much as possible, roll with the punches, and above all, never take myself too seriously. Those were valuable lessons I learned when I started out in development. I'm sure you've got a lot to learn too, and they'll be useful for you as well. But here's a few other valuable concepts that I believe should be important if you hope to survive in development. Concept number one, development is a process, not a destination. Development incorporates three key activities, public relations, recruitment, and fundraising. Public relations is the process of getting your message out to the public. Most nonprofits feel their organization is one of the best kept secrets in the world, or at least in their community. Getting people to know and understand your mission, vision, and values is vital to your success. The more people know about you, the more they'll be inclined to give. Take advantage of every opportunity out there to get your message to the world. Use all aspects of social media. Utilize email marketing, MailChimp, Constant Contact, Adobe Campaign, and other avenues for highlighting your mission, strategies, and getting stories of changed lives to anyone who's interested. Take speaking engagements when offered and stand at booths at conferences or other business meetings or church functions, assuming you feel it's worth your time. Events like dinners, banquets, athons are all great PR activities as well. And let the media know when you're doing things that are benefiting the community and see if they're willing to cover that. Perhaps there's a human interest side of your organization that they can take on. But also use one contact or current donor to get you meetings and appointments with another contact. If you have a board, perhaps conduct a name storming session for them during a board meeting and ask them to set up appointments with you and another person where they lead out in introducing you and letting you explain about the organization. All in an effort to get your message out. 
Now, the backbone of any nonprofit is its human resources, the staff and volunteers. Recruitment of those individuals is vital to your success, and you need to know how to motivate and challenge those individuals to come join you in the fulfillment of your mission. Many of the activities above, such as dinners, banquets, thons, meeting, and advertising are, all, are also great ways to recruit volunteers and ultimately recruit full and part-time staff. If recruitment is the backbone, then fundraising is the fuel that makes the other two activities and really all your activities operate efficiently. Think of a Ferrari sitting in a garage. That vehicle is top of the line, but it can't do what it was built to do without fuel. The same is true for fundraising. Your nonprofit was created to accomplish a mission, and it can't accomplish the mission without financial resources. As important as the gift or donation is, building relationships is even more important. Anyone can get a one-time gift, but get a gift over and over is the key, and that comes from friend raising. That's why in addition to fundraising, I've used friend raising interchangeably because I want people to know that raising friends is, is as important to me as raising funds. Too often people think that money alone is the solution to finding success for your nonprofit, but getting ongoing money comes from relationships. And it's also a combination of all three of these activities that will lift your organization over all the others. Now, when I said that development isn't a destination, it's a process, that means incorporating all of those three. That includes moving people along a continuum called the development model. For further information of the development model, watch this video above. You've probably heard the term moves management, whereby partners or donors go from knowing little about your organization to knowing a lot about your organization, but that doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. This leads us to our concept number two. Development incorporates win, keep, and lift. No nonprofit will continue to exist without winning people to their cause and eventually moving them to a point where they give to the organization and give on a regular basis. Your goal will be to win suspects or prospects to your cause by introducing them to the problem, why you were created in the first place, your problems and activities, what it is that you do and how you do them, including the lives that are changed through your activities is important, and opportunities to be involved with their time, talent, and treasure is essential. Once someone is won to your cause, you want to do everything in your power to keep them committed and giving to your organization. This includes immersing them in your activities through email marketing, direct mail, phone calls, and personal appointments. Lastly, you want to keep people growing by lifting them and introducing them to greater opportunities and to new levels of giving. This may include more specific projects that's designated gifts rather than undesignated gifts. Concept number three, any great proposal or presentation includes three key ingredients, problems, programs, and possibilities. The problem addresses the reason your organization was originally created. First, every organization is created to address, or better yet, solve a problem that exists in the world. For someone to give more than a token gift to your nonprofit, they need to understand and agree with your premise that there is a problem and that needs solving. Second, once there is agreement that there is a problem, then you need to be able to show what your nonprofit is doing to truly address and even solve the problem for at least some people. Problems are often solved by programs and projects, and they involve change lives, individuals who went from bad to good or hurting to healing. And specific stories of real people shared with the prospective donor always makes a difference. Third, there must be possibilities or opportunities. The Bible has an amazing reference that says, without vision, the people perish. People need something to make them feel valued and important. Your organization needs to have a BHAG. That's a big, hairy, audacious goal to put before people. Then ask them to help you accomplish that goal or goals and give them a reason to give with outcomes that are going to make a difference in our world and where they can be the hero in the story. Concept number four, development always involves people giving to people justified by the cause. An important concept that I learned early on is that people like to give to help other people. We are created and wired to help others. We have an innate desire to make a difference in the lives of others and in the world, and it just feels best to do that through individual people. But not just anyone, people who have a legitimate need or desire to want change in their life. That makes the need or desire to change a cause, and people need to agree with the cause. 
Tell a prospective donor a story about a person in need. It will most likely touch their heart at a certain level. Then show them a picture of that person and it moves them even more. Show them a video of that person or better yet, let them talk to that person on the phone through video conferencing or in person and you have the start of a connection for a lifetime. People will give to others if the cause is right and there is agreement with the cause. My wife and I raise our own funding with our organization and most of the 128 current partners have given to us for all of our 28 years and counting. They do so because they care about us, our family, our needs and what we're doing. But it wasn't always that way. Most started giving to help us because we had a connection as people, but they more than anything agreed with the mission, vision and values of the organization we work with. There are a lot more development basics that I could have shared, but learning the concepts of public relations, recruitment and fundraising, the concepts of win, keep and lift, and also problem, projects and possibilities. And of course, people give to people justified by the cause will give you the tools you need to take you a long way down the road to becoming fully funded. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below listing which concepts you liked best or wanted to start first. And if you missed anything valuable that you learned, share that in the con comments so that can help our entire community get better. As a fun exercise to let me know you got this far in the video, type the word basics in the comment section. If you're interested in joining me and making a positive impact on our world and even for eternity, please hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. If you want to find out what to do and say during a presentation, watch this video and raise more money than ever. I wish you the best as you strive to increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next video.